Specialized universal secretary interface online. Good morning, Mr. Zork. Today's agenda. Good morning, Mr. Zork. How are we today? I'm the training tutorial. Susie has activated me after reviewing your less than satisfactory performances over the past week. But don't worry, I'm here to help. Now, I'm afraid this training tutorial may be a bit difficult for you. Susie forwarded me your score on the official Galaxial IQ test and I think it's safe to say that you may not be the sharpest tool in the shed. Mr. Zork, that's highly inappropriate. Nevertheless, I will do what I can. I'm sure that after some basic information, strategies, and some tips and tricks, you can be a challenging opponent and a competent ally. Now, are you ready to begin? Mr. Zork? Uh, well, I'll just get started. Let's begin with Cat Shot. This basic attack is very diverse and a lot of combinations work well together. I always recommend upgrading attack speed and damage, which are useful in every situation. Then, combine that with a third skill of your choice. Split Cat Shot with damage and attack speed help turn your basic attack into a persistent annoyance to groups of enemies, and increasing attack range can also really help with hitting enemies and increasing distance between you and them, keeping you a little safer. Relying on Cat Shot rather than Siege Mode gives you a lot more mobility, and can turn you into more of a harasser than a tank. Now if you like using traps, you want your Cat Shot to deal the most damage per second possible. That means upgrading attack speed, damage, and this upgrade increasing damage to snared enemies by 100%. That way you make the most out of every opportunity that you've snared an enemy. Having the most DPS against snared enemies is important if you use traps. Now, how are you liking that cat shot? I see that. Although cats are cute, your combat walker is most effective when using your snare combined with your powerful siege mode. In most cases, cat shot is less effective and should be upgraded later. Not yet. If you're gonna try to fight like a harasser, stop, because there are other awesome knots specifically designed to be harassers. Your combat walker is most effective as a tank and, in most circumstances, should be played as such. How is this sinking in, Mr. Zork? Is this making any sense? Yes, we know that, but, uh, uh, Mr. Zork, that's not the best place to stand. The burners are gonna come online. I think you should move. Like, now. You're not gonna move. You're, you're, you're just gonna stand. <sighs> Let's just discuss traps. Traps are very important and helpful for both offense and defense. By upgrading trap snare time, trap duration, and adding a silencing effect to it, it helps ensure that any enemy caught will be an easy target for you and your allies to get an easy kill, or at least get a lot of damage in. Now, trap placement is very important. Place traps in places the enemy can't see until it's too late. Setting traps right in your enemy's face is also effective. You can snare your opponents out of nowhere, surprising them and turning the tide of the encounter. You can also place traps to block off paths so enemies are deterred from using them to flank or escape. Place traps over entrances, choke points, and even in front of or along jump pads. Now this next tip takes what I like to call a golden rule for awesome knots and applies it to the trap ability. Any ability that can be used to trap or attack can also be used to retreat or escape. If you find yourself running away from an unfortunate encounter, a well-placed trap can be just the thing to help you escape. Consider setting a trap before entering an encounter, so that way, if things go sour, that trap can help cover your escape. Anywhere along the boost chute in Ribbit is a good place, as any enemy who uses it will emerge snared at the top, where you can be waiting. The chute in the middle of Alguin is a great place, as anyone who falls through is an easy target for anyone down below. Speaking of down below, you can set up traps at either entrance in the tunnel underneath, or in the little hidden rooms connecting the bottom tunnel to the middle. Set up traps over platforms leading up to the next level, so any enemy will be deterred or caught when trying to escape or flank. Overall, well-placed traps are a great help offensively and defensively for you and your allies. Now, do you think you understand traps, Mr. Zork? <sighs> this is gonna be a long day. Moving on to Siege Mode. Siege Mode prioritizes damage and defense, solidifying you as a formidable tank. When playing Siege Mode, there's a couple of different routes you can take. 
The first is going for as much damage as possible. When fully upgraded, the nuke does so much damage that it becomes the best way to get kills and makes enemies think twice or even fear of facing you. Upgrading nuke speed and blast radius are also important for ensuring enemies are hit for massive amounts of damage more often. After that, upgrade turret gun damage and even add slow to your shots to keep enemies around even longer to take even more damage. Now that you deal tons of damage, combine this with your new knowledge of trap placement to set very lethal traps. When using this method, if you can surprise trap an enemy and have a nuke ready to go, you can almost always get a kill. Now, if you find that you tend to die a lot while in siege mode, using the defensive route can help keep you alive. By adding an overall shield and a shield while in siege mode, you can reduce damage by 31%. And by purchasing this upgrade, you can reduce certain enemies' attacks that would normally be devastating to a very manageable amount. Adding health recovery and overall health can help make you even more tanky. But having these upgrades coincide with a healer, like Voltar or Genji, and you can become borderline unmovable. This all sounds well and good, but we haven't addressed your biggest vulnerability. You can't move while in siege mode. This makes you an easy target and makes it harder to escape. You can get this ability to knock back enemies when exiting siege mode, making it easier to escape, but there are more general strategy tips you can use. Be mindful of where you set up. Only set up in places where you can stay in siege mode for more than a couple seconds. You don't want to be stuck with siege mode constantly on cooldown. Be aware of your surroundings and know when to leave an engagement. If more than one enemy knot is coming in to stop your push, or if you're alone, it's probably best just to pack up and leave. Again, your weakness in siege mode is not being able to move. You can't move while in siege mode, right? Wrong. Allow me to introduce a vital concept to Siege Mode. Set up in Siege Mode on one of these platforms and press down. Congratulations, you just moved well in Siege Mode. This little trick can help a surprising amount. Set up on these platforms whenever possible, because you can move down to avoid damage and get out of sticky situations. You can set up in the middle of Rivet and fall through every platform if necessary to continually change your position. You can set up on a platform in front of a base turret and fall down when the push is over. You can set up on a moving platform and become vertically mobile. You can fall down to avoid an AoE attack. You can even fall through jump pads. If you fall down into a jump pad, you will not launch unless you exit siege mode. Being down here isn't usually that helpful, unless you're trying to be cute. <laughs> now that we've covered a lot of helpful tips, let's use them to pull off a few moves. Here are a few pro moves that you can do that are a lot of fun. Get an enemy to chase you up the middle shoot in Ribbit. While you take the launch pad up, go ahead and leave them a little present. When you get to the top, deploy into siege mode and have a nuke waiting for them when they pop out, snared at the top. Set up a trap in front of a hidden entrance and wait for an enemy. When someone enters, launch your nuke and get an easy kill. Or at least send them running away with a heart attack. However, don't become a camper when using this move. As soon as you get a kill, or if you're waiting too long, just move on. Your team isn't going to win if you're sitting there doing nothing. Use your traps and nukes in conjunction with other Knot's abilities. Set up a trap and have a teammate push or teleport an enemy into it. Then launch your nuke. Use your nuke with another Knot's ability that does massive amounts of damage, like Sentry's Black Hole or Clunk's Explosion. Now, for my personal favorite. If the enemy team is pushing your last turret line, take the jump pad to it, turn into siege mode mid-jump, and immediately launch your nuke. When you get to the other side, you've just nuked the entire enemy team, defended your turret, and sent them running away in desperate need of a change of underwear. Now, it's important to note that you have a few mortal enemies. <laughs> Scree, for example, is a great counter to Durple. Be very careful when fighting Scree, as he can set up his saw while you're in siege mode, forcing you to move or take way too much damage. Consider waiting for Scree to use his saw before setting up. His totem can also be used to block your nuke or block your escape. Raylan can use her time portal snipe combo to destroy you quickly. Think twice before converting to siege mode around her. Assassin characters can be very lethal to Durple when not at full health, due to Durple's limited movement. Stay close to teammates when fighting these knots, and vary up your strategy based on who you're up against. And that about does it for this tutorial. Make sure you practice and experiment using these methods so that you can find your ideal playing style, play smarter, and invent some more pro moves to help get the upper hand against your opponents. Now, go be awesome! <laughs> Mr. Zork? <sighs> Susie, it's up to you to take care of him. Use my lessons to take care of him, and at least I leave knowing that he's in good hands. 
Tutorial completed. Powering down. Mr. Zork requires assistance. <laughs> Attack. The cleaners will take care of that. Now that's a hostile takeover. You're a boss, Mr. Zork. This reminds me of last year's Christmas party. Clear out your desk. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. Mr. Zork expresses his displeasure with your performance. 